there really just hasn't been a more urgent moment in human history to conserve as much land as possible, both sustainable forestry and wilderness. There has been an incredible amount of science that's come out in the last few years that point to the unparalleled value of wild forests to conserve biodiversity, to hold off extinction, and to store and sequester incredible amounts of carbon. We know that wilderness is an incredibly powerful natural climate solution, and we need to be conserving more of it. Northeast Wilderness Trust is a land trust based in Montpelier, Vermont. But we work all across New England and the state of New York. And we were founded in 2002 and have conserved 37,000 acres of land up to this point. All of the properties that Northeast Wilderness Trust protect are considered forever wild, which means from the moment we either acquire it or put an easement on it, there will no longer be logging and the property will essentially be an old growth forest of tomorrow. We have to adjust our heads to move in forest time. I'm deeply envious of the people in 300 years who get to see the forests we protected today when they're all grown up. Because <laughs> I mean, on the time scale of a tree, most of the forests in northern New England are like teenagers and barely get beyond that. When there is some potential future time down there where our properties have 300-year-old trees on it, that's going to be really cool. We are at the Bram Hall Wilderness Preserve in Bridgewater Hall, Vermont. We conserved this property in March of 2020. And so when I first came here and I met this property, I just had this really magical experience. I was walking through the woods and there was just a porcupine on a rock looking at me and there were deer and there was moose rubs everywhere and it was early spring. So there were all kinds of little amphibians in the vernal pools and it was just super magical. And I think maybe I'm slightly biased, but that magic has just sort of permeated every visit since then. And um, it sort of grew as a place that became really important to me. And it became really important to me to finish this project. So some of the features of this place that make it important for wildlife are one, there's really mature forest. There's a long history of human um, Westerners settling here and kind of clear cutting, taking down all the forests. And so almost everything we have here is second growth forest in the whole Northeast. Those forests have been used in a, in a wide variety of ways ever since for timber, for sugaring, for firewood extraction, stuff like that. And so as a result, sort of across the region, our forests are really lacking in that old forest structure, those big dead trees, those big down logs. And those are important for tons of things. Those are important for little tiny decomposers and slime molds, but they're also important for bears, which will hibernate in them for the winter and coyotes will have their pups in them and fishers will live in them and hunt in them. And, and so, all the way from the large mammals to the tiny mammals to the slimy little organisms, that kind of structure is really important. And it's rare, it's really rare. And this place has a lot of it. And as a result, we really wanted to protect this as it is.
Babysitter Swamp has always impressed me as being unique, practically from the first time I saw it over 45 years ago, because it's the only place along this wetland complex that has old trees. And as a wildlife ecologist, I began to recognize that there were things going on on that property that were different than the other properties. It's the upper tooth that inserts into and stops and anchors, and then it's the drag of the lower jaw that actually makes the bite. Wow. Isn't that cool? Here, you come feel this. Babysitter Swamp is a name that I, I gave this property because when I first started coming here, my research quickly helped me appreciate that it was being used by mother bears and their infants. Basically what happens is the mothers bring their little ones to these huge old trees and the cubs climb the trees to get out of harm's way while she feeds in the adjoining wetland. And there's a, a green up, as we call it, of, of, of sedges and forbs that happen there uh, in late April and May when she's using this place that are really important food for her. What seems odd is that th this place gets used every year and yet bears only have offspring every other year. So what's going on? A given mother bear will use the trees every other year, but it's her daughters that use the trees in the alternate years. And that's what my research revealed. And as a tracker and professional naturalist, I know that the trees are getting used every year because of the scent marking sign that I find. The hairs on the trees, the claw marks, the bites. From the beginning, I wanted to conserve my property with Northeast Wilderness Trust. It was both incredibly wonderful and logical that I do that. There isn't a day that goes by that I'm not just immensely grateful for that opportunity because here in the East where so much of our land is privately owned, we're really lucky to have this organization helping us do this important work. So something can feel wild or have a wild character, but unless it's protected, there's no guarantee no it will stay I've that seen way. too many wonderful places mm -hmm. get trashed. I've spent a lot of time in some of the wildest habitat in North America. And the thing that causes me great pain is the realization that again and again, no matter where I am, from the Ongava Peninsula in northern Quebec all the way across to the Arctic National Refuge, you know, with 11 different caribou herds, for example, that I've studied, none of it's safe. Very little of it is put aside as wilderness. I think each and every one of us really needs to get on this and work with organizations like Northeast Wilderness Trust to put these wonderful lands aside forever. And large and small alike. I don't care if you want to conserve 20 acres or 200 acres or 2,000 acres. It's all important. The biggest threat to wilderness is not what's actually happening to wilderness that exists, but it's the lack of wilderness areas in New England. Out of all of the incredible conservation that's happened across the region, which at this point is upwards of 25% of New England has been conserved in some way, only about one to 3% of all of that is forever wild. It's a radical act of humility to put a piece of land into a designation that means humans permanently will not do anything with it. Western civilization has dictated that forests are there for our benefit. Our civilization has been built on the backbone of these forest resources. Wilderness conservation flips that entire thing on its head. And it's about setting these places aside permanently for their benefit, not for ours.